What up, nerds? I'm Clay Cooper from Prep Expert. I've got two perfect scores on the SAT and one perfect score on the ACT. And today I'm gonna teach you how to deal with data sets on both tests. All right, when it comes to data sets on the SAT and ACT, the data set itself is just a set of values, like you can see here. I've got two data sets drawn on screen here that you can take a look at. Uh, each of those data sets is just a collection of values. The values may or may not have meaning in themselves. They may or may not reflect something important. They might just be numbers. Uh, either way though, the data set is just the set of values. And when it comes to data sets, we need to be able to calculate several aspects. We need to know how to find the mean, how to find the median, how to find the mode, the range, and we need to be able to at least recognize standard deviation. You don't actually have to calculate standard deviation on the SAT or the ACT, but I'll explain the difference between recognizing it and calculating it in just a moment. Let's start with the mean though. Mean is the easiest and it's the most important that we understand correctly. The mean of a data set is just the average of the data set. That's all it means. And I always calculate the average using the following formula. The average is the sum of the values in the data set over the number of numbers, right? So it's the sum of the values in the set over the number of values in the set. Uh, and let's calculate the mean for this set that we're looking at here on top. We'll call this set A and this set B. So let's calculate the mean for data set A. Uh, first of all, how many values do I have in the set? Let's see, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Looks like I have 11 values in my data set. So I know my number of numbers is 11. I can go ahead and plug that in right there. Uh, and now I'm gonna find their sum. Just add them together. Five plus eight minus one plus zero plus eight plus two plus 17 minus six plus nine plus 10 plus three. All right. So now that I've got the sum ready to find for the average, this is actually a great time to use your calculator. I'm a big believer in not using your calculator too much on the SAT or the ACT, but in this particular case, adding numbers is exactly what you should use it for. So five plus eight minus one plus zero plus eight plus two plus 17 minus six plus nine plus 10, plus three. So our sum overall is 55. Looks like the sum of our values is 55 and there are 11 values in the set. So when I divide 55 by 11, I get a mean of five. Excellent, nice and easy, our mean is five. So again, the mean is just the average. You find it by uh, adding up the values in the data set and then dividing by the number of values. All right, now let's look at the median. What is the median of a data set? Well, the median of a data set is the number that is in the middle of the data set. That is actually what median means in Latin. It means the middle. So the median is the number in the middle. Uh, it's simple enough. Uh, you have to put the numbers in order first though. In other words, it's the mi middle value in the data set when the numbers and values are placed in order. I can't just select the one that falls in the middle the way they've arranged it if they're not already in order. So does that mean that I have to write the whole data set out in order? So do I have to you know, write negative six and then negative one and then zero and go all the way up to the highest value in the set? Actually, no, there's an easier way to do it. Let me show you a little trick. Since our job with the median is to find the value in the middle of the set, we can use a little trick in which we just cross out the values on either end and ask, am I down to the middle yet? If the answer is still no, then I do it again. Cross out the values on either end and ask, am I down to the middle yet? If the answer is no, again, one more time, am I down to the middle yet? Eventually, by crossing out the highest number and the lowest number in the set, I can find the median without having to rewrite the set out in order. So let's put that to work. What's the highest number in this data set? 17, so I cross out 17. And what's the lowest number in the data set? Negative six. I cross out negative six. Am I down to the middle yet? Do I have only one or two values left? No, I don't. So I'll do it again. What's the highest value left? It's 10. What's the lowest value left? Negative one. 
Okay, am I down to the middle value in the set yet? Again, not yet, so let's do it again. Uh, the highest value I think is nine, the lowest value remaining is zero. Am I down to the middle? Not yet, one more time. The highest value is eight, the lowest value is two. Okay, am I down to the middle yet? Not quite, one more time. Highest value is eight, lowest value is three. All right, now I only have one value left and that value, value is in fact the middle value in my set, in this case, five. Now, it is not always the case that the mean and the median will be the same number, that's just a coincidence in this instance but the median is the middle value in the set. All right, let's talk about the mode of a data set. The mode of a data set, guys, is just the most frequently appearing value in the set. Whatever value appears most is the mode. In this case, it looks like we have two values of eight, but we don't have any other value that appears more than once. That means that our mode is eight. I always think of the mode as the winner of the race. Uh, it, there can be more than one mode. For instance, if we were to add another three onto the data set, now I have two eights and two threes. So our mode then would be eight and three. They would both be modes. But that's not the case. Uh, the mode, the way the data set looks right now is just eight. All right, let's talk now about range. Range is probably the easiest aspect of a data set to calculate. It is simply the highest number minus the lowest number. Again, it's the highest number minus the lowest number. Note that range of a data set is different than the range of a function. The range of a function is all the possible output values of the function. The range of a data set is just the highest number or the highest value minus the lowest value. So what's the highest value in our set? It's 17. What's the lowest value? Negative six. So my highest value is 17 minus my lowest value, negative six. Two negatives become a positive, so that's 17 plus six or 23. So my range is 23. Now, let's hold off on standard deviation for just a moment. I'm going to explain how standard deviation works momentarily, but on both the SAT and the ACT, you'll only ever be asked to compare standard deviations between two different data sets. So let's go ahead and take a look at this second data set and put uh, what we just learned to work before we take a look at standard deviation. So you know how to calculate the mean now, let's do it. What is the mean? It's just the average, which is the sum over the number of numbers. So for data set B, what is that? Let's see, the uh, sum is two plus two plus two plus three plus four plus four plus five plus five plus five plus six. All right, how many values are there in this data set? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, so adding that up, we got six, nine, 17, 32, 38. So 38 divided by 10, which is of course 3.8. So the mode for our second, or excuse me, the mean for our second data set is 3.8. Now what's the median of our second data set? Well, this is a little bit tricky. We actually haven't encountered this yet because our second data set, as we just discovered, has 10 values. And it's actually a little bit counterintuitive, but a data set that has an even number of values in it, like 10, actually doesn't have one value that's exactly in the middle. So it's tempting to divide 10 by two and think that the fifth value in the set is the middle value. But in reality, because 10 is an even number, it divides evenly into two halves, each containing five numbers, which means there is no number exactly in the middle. So the median of a data set that has an even number of values will actually be the average of the two middle most values. So in other words, if I have values number one through five, and then values number six through 10, I'll take the final value of the first half, five, and the first value of the second half, six. So the fifth value and the sixth value averaged that will be my median for this data set. Now, as it turns out, this data set's already placed in order, so I can just count. One, two, three, four, five. That's my fifth value. Sixth value is four as well. So it looks like then that my median is the average of four and four, which is, of course, four. So my median for the data set B is four. All right, now what about the mode for data set B? Well, again, uh, it's possible to have multiple modes, and I think, in fact, we do here. The value two appears three times and the value five appears three times as well. So I think my modes are two and five. Note that in an odd situation, if we were to add values so that we now have three of every value, in that particular instance, we would actually have no mode. In other words, if I have three twos, three threes, three fours, three fives, and three sixes, because all of the values tie, so to speak, that particular situation would mean that we had no mode. Uh, if everybody ties, there is no winner. That's how I always think about it. 
So uh, the modes in this case though are two and five. Now let's find the range again, just the highest number minus the lowest number. That's six minus two in this case, four. All right, and now we're ready for standard deviation. Now, a lot of people uh, really hate standard deviation, and I understand it's a complicated concept, uh, but good news, on the SAT and the ACT, you don't actually have to calculate standard deviation. You just need to be able to recognize it when you see it. You need to be able to compare the standard deviations between two data sets. So in order to make that easier, let me first define standard deviation. Standard deviation in simple terms is just how spread out the values in a data set are. The technical definition is something like the average distance from the mean of the values in a set. But we don't really need to know that. All we really need to know is that standard deviation represents how spread out the values in a data set are. If they are very spread out, then we have a high standard deviation. If they are not very spread out, then we have a low standard deviation. So looking at these two data sets, which one has values that are more spread out? I think it's A. A has a large value, it has a pretty decent sized negative value, and it has an, an uneven, inconsistent spread between those two points. So if I were to draw a number line, my values in A are gonna be kinda all over the place, right? Uh, what about B though? B's standard deviation is much smaller. B is spread over a much smaller range, though that does not necessarily mean it has a standard deviation. The reality is all of its values fall within a very narrow four number window, right? Everything is between two and six. Its values are not very spread out. So in this case, we would say that the standard deviation for set A is higher than it is for set B. So that's all you need to know about data sets on the SAT and ACT. That's all I've got for you today. Please don't forget to like this video if you found it helpful. You can also subscribe to Prep Experts YouTube channel for other videos just like this one. In fact, we'd love it if you'd leave us a comment below this video. Let us know what you want to hear about in our next video. We might feature your suggested topic in the next video. You can also find a coupon in the description below that you can use for discounts on any of our products on our website, prepexpert.com. You can use that coupon code to get money off of a course with myself or another instructor, or you can sign up for tutoring if you'd prefer that. So until next time, keep working hard.